Hi and welcome to Hotel Database Management System developed using Python. Let me show you guys how this works. We can always display like you've seen. We can reset or we can exit. Let's assume we want to reset. We automatically have new reference number. Let's enter our candidate details. Let's say the name is Grace. Johnson address of Miss Johnson let's say that's Kingsland Road and date of birth all right so let's enter the rest details of Miss Johnson and there we go all we then need to do is click on add and total there we go those are the details of miss johnson and we can just preview that but unfortunately we can't see that because we have some duplicate here so what we do is just select those and delete there we go and that's miss chris johnson so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take you guys straight into python development environment and we put one of these together let's do that now guys and welcome to hotel database management system i'm going to start by importing as follows so i'm going to call that tick enter and that will be import i like to import it all and import as follows as well let's increase the font size so that you guys can see so that you can have a very good view of what i'm working on there okay the next thing i'm going to do is you see this very one this is going to be the front end and just for your information this tutorial is actually at a request of one of my viewers out there let me show you the emails or the comment he sent to me and right there is the comment sent to me by these very guys i've actually just cover the is name let's tip exit out so can you please produce a database for this very program right here this one is officially on YouTube that is how to create a tell management system but without database he preferred this with database and I sent him a link to some of my Python database system but he insisted on this very one that's his uh, comment back to me so is this possible that you make a video on database connectivity on the project hotel okay this very one here and that is the reason why I'm actually doing this so let's minimize that and continue so the class name is going to be known as hotel and let's enter a column there and the next thing is I'm going to define my function and the function or you can also call it method let's say initialize as follows that is going to be self comma root now I'm going to close that up enter a column there so I'm now going to say self dot root is that in there that's going to be dot root equals root and that will be the name of my main project so self dot root dot title the title this time around I'm just going to call it hotel database management system there we go right so now let's say the German tree as for the German tree I'm just going to copy that paste that self dot root dot German tree I will use the German tree just to define the the coordinates and the resolution for my application so it's going to be 1350 by let's go for 800 
plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero means it's going to be starting somewhere on the upper left hand corner so the next thing is I'm now going to create some widget so the very first widget that I'm going to create is going to be my main frame so it's going to be called frame is course main frame equals frame and this frame is actually going to be inside the inside self dot root itself okay and this main frame we can just say dot grid change that that's going to be that's the right spelling there that's taken care of so before I continue I might as well just run this up so I'm going to come down here just run it up let's save this project before we continue save us so we're going to call that hotel database management system database sa underscore system that's fine right save that there we go if I decide to run this very program now what you just see is going to be a great big interface that's all there's nothing to it there now let's continue I'm gonna copy this there is there's nothing to it anyway but I'll just change things around the next one is going to be top be known as top frame there we go the top frame will be resident right inside main frame so change this to main frame there and I'm going to add a border will make that 10 and the width for that is going to be 1350 the height I'll make that approximately let's see for the height I'll just set it for about 550 there we go let's get it parted x axis that will be 2 and relief I'm gonna make that rigid equals rigid there and just going to pack it to the top okay it's packed to the top let's run it and see what's going to happen oh we have a narrow okay let's change the packing of this very one copy that paste and I don't think you like that style now let's run it again there we go that's my top frame right there now close that now the next thing is I'm now going to define some other frames I'll call that left frame let the left frame will be let's change this to left this one to the left as well okay that's for my left frame the left frame will let's say that's the width of that is going to be approximately 400 and the height yeah I'll leave that as that okay what about the padding okay, let's get rid of the padding for that and I will leave it as relief okay it's going to be on the left because it's for the left frame right and I also also need one for the right frame copy that paste that in there as for the left frame anyway where is that going to be resident is it going to be inside the top frame come in here and just paste that inside the top frame and the right frame that would be, should be inside the top frame as well now just align that to the right and this will be known as right frame the 
the same thing applies to the one below right frame as well there okay that's how it's all looking like so let's speed that up now guys there we go right there so we ha I have the right frame and inside the right frame I have three other frames so that's frame right frame one two and three so let's save and run there we go that's how it's looking right now okay let's close that and continue so have a good look at the frames you're gonna need that okay let's take it from the top now bring it down there now let's add some more widget okay for the very first widget I'm gonna add that would be my label so let's just enter widget here and there I'm gonna call that label uh, uh, let's say self dot lbl customer ID equals label and this very label is going to be right inside left frame paste that in there and comma we enter the following for the font it's going to be area you can change your font to whatever you want the choice is yours and let's say it's going to be about 12 and let's make that bold as well there we go close that up Come our text the text content on it is going to be known as customer I say customer reference yes that's fine and close that up there and customer reference then we get a pardon comma get a party to the uh, x axis I'm gonna say that would be about one and let me just run that up here so that's going to be inside row number one paste that the grid will be dot grid equals row that will be row zero not number one row zero column zero equals zero and let's say strictly to the west there close that all right if i decide to run it all you just see would just be customer reference let's see our font they should be equals right here there we go now let's run it again and see there okay let's add a text box I'm gonna copy this and just change things around come right down here paste change all of these to text box txt txt have the text box for me and this one as well repeat exactly the same thing and there we go guys so let me run it and you see how that's gonna look like then we can then speed up the whole process there we go guys look at that okay let's close that and we come back in here I'm just gonna copy and I'll paste it around there we go okay have a good look at the lines of codes guys that's how it's looking now okay those are the widgets that I'm going to be using so I'm going to run it so that you guys can have a good look at how it looks like there and underneath here I'm going to add um, some checkbox underneath here so maybe about four five of those actually so let me just show you guys these lines of code look at these widgets 
labels and text box or text entry it's called entry it's called so I'm going to take it down so that you guys have a good look at it so that you can uh, just type along there okay so let's start work with the checkbox and right underneath here I'm going to start to work with the very first checkbox that's going to be self dot let's call that LBL proof of ID okay of ID and this very one is going to be I can just copy this anyway just paste it there that will be the label for it there and let's change this since this is 11 this is going to be 12 right and now underneath here I'm now going to work on the checkbox itself come right down here paste and this I'm going to call it C B O right CBO and that is going to be known as checkbox no combo box actually CBO combo box it's not a checkbox T uh, as TTK dot combo box and this combo box is going to be right inside the left frame and yeah left frame let's just copy that paste that in there and the state of it I'm gonna make that let's say state equals read only right comma the font I'll leave the font maybe as 12 I can always change it if I want there and the width I'm going to go for about 16 okay so one other thing is let's copy this and I intend to enter some data into it so those data will be classed as value so let's enter the value for those data and that is going to be the very first value I'm going to call that since it's for identifier I'm going to call it the first value let's say that is empty then comma the very first one would be as a pilot license and let's go for driving license then we have license then we have student ID passport now let's copy this again so that we can run things up so self dot combo box proof of ID dot current the current value that is going to be equal zero which means the very first one will be there will be nothing in there and let's say dot grid and that is going to be row I'm going to make that okay that will be row 12 anyway copy that and paste it right here row number 12 oh this is 12 and yeah that's correct row 12 and let's get it parted I'm going to come like party to the y axis I'll make the value 3 for now I can always change it and the X axis I'm gonna make that two and close that up. 
Okay, let's change this to type of ID there. So that should take care of the combo box. Let's come in there and run that. Let's run it and see. There we go. That's my combo box in place. I can always drop that down, select the yeah, that's not bad. So let's copy. And I'm going to just paste that and change things around. So this one is going to be so this one is going to be for mail. So I'll change that to mail and this will be LBL mail paste paste all of these are mails yeah that's not bad okay and as 12 so this will be 13 rule 13 column 0 rule 13 column 1 I would then need to change the mail here come right in here the very first mail are we going for let's say that is breakfast And followed by lunch. Okay. And let's go for dinner. There we go. So we have those three in there. I'm going to run it and let's see. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Let's speed that up now. So all we just need to do is copy and paste. All right, the combo box are all done. So have a good look at it. There. Those are the lines of code for the combo box from here down here. In total, there are five. That's the very first one here. For the type of ID, mail, room type, and room number and extension room extension number that is it done let's run that there we go guys look at that okay it's looking good just how we want it all right let's close that the next thing is I want to take care of this one here one two and three and underneath here there will be a button so the very first thing I want to do is to add a label here so that one is simple so, so let's come right underneath here I'm going to copy this let's copy these lines of lines uh, comment and just dump it right here position it properly okay the next thing I want to do is to add a label here so I'm just going to copy this label Let's copy all of this and I'll paste it right here. It's going to be inside my very first, the first frame here. This very frame, let me show it to you guys. Frame number one here, right frame one. Come right down, and this will become right frame one. Okay, I'm going to change the, the name here. I'm just going to change it to let's say label and change this to label as well there and in here you see this very one I'm going to kind of like let's get rid of it of this because I intend to use the label for something else so I'm going to copy all of this I want it in this side and here I'm going to change this let's change that to maybe 6 and this let's go for about 10 yeah one right here the very first thing I'm going to enter is going to be customer reference and I will then enter backspace and the next value I'll enter will be first name yeah first name ok 
okay let me just press enter so that we have enough room for all the data I intend to enter and here well let's change this to zero zero first before I forget zero and a zero here and this one let's say let's pan it about 17 no 17 okay now backspace and let's enter so name yeah I'm gonna just run it just to see how that will look like for now there we go see my title are taking shape so the next one is going to be address so backslash T that's how you actually enter what is known as tab okay just like we have it in C++ there so the address is there now let's see the address again there we go there's not enough room in there okay that's no problem now the next one is going to be tab I'm gonna call that gender and let's just speed up the rest alright that is how it all looks like now okay if I run it this is what you guys will see there we go now in here I'm now going to upload a list box but I also need the scroll bar so first of all let's create my scroll bar let's just call that scroll I'm gonna use lowercase scroll bar equals scroll in uppercase bar and this very scroll bar is going to be right inside frame number two paste okay now my scroll bar copy that come right down here paste that dot grid it's going to be let me copy all of this instead of typing it paste it right there and it's going to be let's say not out there we go and this is going to be zero why this is zero as well and that's it for my scroll bar if I run it all you just see will be the scroll bar nothing else okay that's it right there so now I'm gonna add a list box that list box will be working with the scroll bar let's say list box hotel and that is equals widget list box and this list box is going to be right inside frame frame number one no it's frame number two copy and paste yeah and the width is going to be as follows let's make that approximately 103 height I want to make that about 14 And what about the fonts? I want to make that 12. I'll copy this. Paste this there. Okay, maybe I should increase this. And what else do I want? And let's say it's going to be to the Y scroll. That's the Y axis scroll command equals scroll bar this one here copy paste that here scroll bar dot set close that and I say hotel 
let's get it binded bind will be what less than less than and that will be that is supposed to be the list box is that in here list box select so that is the function that we that we use to identify whatever selection I made inside the method that I will declare later on so for now I'm just going to close that okay then let's round up the list box itself there we go I've rounded up my list box and let's run it and see how that's going to look like okay come in here run oh okay this is too large let's go back and change this font to 10 and let's run it now again there look at that then we'll close that let's come down here we need to add the following so first of all let me just create a divider here or kind of like a comment now the next thing i'd like to do now is to create a label and that's going to be for my tax i need about three of those yeah subtotal and total now let's change the name of this widget around and get them positioned first of all the rule of this is going to be rule zero column zero rule one rule zero column one yeah and this one is going to be rule two column one okay i'm going to need one more yeah so there so in that case this is going to be zero okay we need a text box let's look for a text box i think i do have some here let's change them around so this text box is going to be for this very one paste that's going to be rule zero column one I need another text box here and this is going to be rule one column zero yep yeah. rule one column one that's correct now we get it somewhere one more here Rule number two, column zero. Column one, rule number two. That's correct. And one more. Okay, then we then change the names around. And this one is going to be that will be three three zero one. That is correct. Now we also need to change the names around this is going to be frame 3 that's frame 3 and the 3 there another one here frame 3 another frame 3 and finally oh, frame 3 and this one, this should be from 3 as well. Yeah. Okay. That should be a nice. Now, one thing is we need to increase the size of the text box, the width. 
let's look at this width I'm gonna make that 76 76 76 then we change the names around 76 and 76 here this this very one I'm gonna call this one that will be number of days this I'm gonna call this the next one paid tax and followed by subtotal and finally we call this total cost okay let's run it and see before I change the the widget details look at that guys okay that's what we want and I like that now we're almost there underneath here it's gonna be buttons so but before that I'm gonna change the names around properly and I'll get back to you you know what to do anyway look at it there we go all I just need to do is to give them appropriate names close that this one is going to be the very first one here I'm going to call it days okay those are just the name I want to change to make it look official and for my own understandings as well yeah okay I'm going to speed that up and get back to you alright guys those are the lines of codes for the labels and text box. Let me write. And there we go. Now underneath here, I'm just going to add some buttons. So let's close that. And I'm going to copy this. Paste it right here. This will be for my buttons. I can even call it widget buttons. Right. Okay, I'm right underneath here. I'm gonna create the very first button. So I'm gonna say self dot btn total and add data. That's going to be the name of my button. So the widget is widget button. And in there is going to be right inside a button frame. There. Okay. I'm going to get it padded. Let's say to the x axis. I'm going to give that about. I'm going to set it for one now. And let's add border make that four and font I'll make the font about 16 so let's just copy this font and dump it here make that 16 and width I say the width that's going to be 13 the height I'm gonna make the height go for two right what about the text on it the text on it let's come down right here the the text on it put this one down so that you guys can see it okay the text on it I'm gonna call that add new and total yeah something like that okay add new and total that will be the name the value of my text box okay and I think that would do it so I'm just gonna say dot grid and that will be roll is gonna be zero equals zero 
and the column is going to be equals zero as well. Make that zero. Okay, then we can even part get it parted to the okay. Alright, let's try it out. Let's just see. Whoa, I have an arrow. Button frame. Button frame. Let's come in here and see what it's called. Oh, it's called bottom frame. Okay. That's my arrow. Let's come back here and just change that. Change this as well. There. So we can now run it and see how that's going to look like. There we go, that's my very first button there, hanging around. But let's see, why am I putting this here, I can also just, say, let's get it parted here anyway. Let's get rid of, oh that was one, get rid of this. Yeah, let's try it again. Then we can just copy and paste there we go the button is fine so all i all i'll just do now is copy and paste and change the names around i need in total it to be seven so this is two three four five all right so button number two three four and five now this is rule yeah so this one will be column one two three four yeah I need I need two more copy that let's paste it there and we change the names around so this one will be five and six five six okay so, so i'm going to run it and let's see how it's, it's all going to look like there we go look at my interface look at the buttons they are all in, in place all right let's exit out and start work with renaming of this button this one is going to be known as exit and the button name will be exit change all of this to exit there we go this is going to be known as reset repeat the same thing here reset Let me follow my consistent name in there, that's fine. And the next one is going to be known as search. The text on it is search. search. Delete. And repeat the same thing here. Okay, we're almost there. We have display and this one will be display. And that is all there is to it. So I'm gonna run it. Save and run. There we go guys. The interface is now ready. That's good. Now the next thing I'd like to do now is I'm going to create the back end for this very application. I've already imported a name there, import hotel database, or I'm just going to change it to import database hotel, right? Yeah, because I already have that name used. So it's going to be import database name. So I'm going to copy this. Now let's go to file, open up new. And this very file, we're going to save it as, that is it, database 
hotel save there we go and this is going to be my back end so in there I'm just going to enter hash and we just call it back back end and for this back end to work you will have to import the following import SQL light you going to, if you don't have SQL light you will have to install that on your system as well okay now that that is done I believe you guys do have SQL light now let's start work with my method so the very first method I'm going to put in place is going to be known as hotel hotel data and those are going to be the data inside my hotel so let's say local variable can or you can call it communication equals SQL light 3 dot connect okay and what would be the name of my database yeah let's make a name for our database I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that bookings yeah in lowercase booking dot DD that's gonna be the name of my database now let's come down here and let's say cursor equals command connect dot cursor and we also want the current to execute as follows execute the following so I'm gonna say using uppercase in there let's come in here and just say create create a table and that table if not on the system if not exists so the table name is booking okay and I'm gonna have an ID for it ID is going to be integer let's put that in lowercase right and the integer is the primary key comma now my very first column I'm gonna call that customer ID and that will be data type is text comma uh, the next one is going to be first name data type is text comma followed by surname and the data type is text comma all right let's just press enter here so that you guys can see it all I'm gonna go for address here data type is text you can see this is in black so let's come in and just say space backslash okay it's now in green it's change color so the next one is going to be gender yeah gender and the data type is text as well comma mobile number go for text now nationality text what is proof of ID text okay I'm gonna put a comma here I said date in that's gonna be in text date 
out takes us to well. Okay, and one more. That will be the email. Email. Text. Close that. Right. Now I have all my fields in place. There should be a comma here. You can just move this here if we want. So let's just check and make sure it's all correct. Okay. Oh, there's an error here. That should be dot. That's the current dot execute. All right. So now let's run this up. I'm going to say connect dot connect. And we also need to get it closed. Dot close. So that is my very first function taken care of. Now let's take care of another one. This other one is going to be known as let me just call that add hotel. Add hotel records. There. In the case of out of tell records I need the details all of these here I'm gonna copy them and just paste it in here and delete the text on it there let's delete all of the text those are the names of my fields get rid of all of those bring this up here repeat the same thing here and so on so those are the fields inside the parameters so let's enter column there they actually acting as the arguments for this method here right okay in total it should be 11 there's four another four here and three here that's cool right now let's come in here now and define my table to so come right on here and that is going to be okay connect with sql dot connect and that is going to be the name of the table then the other one is i'm going to have to say yeah let's get current as well paste that in there and the other one is we need to get it executed as well i'm gonna copy that copy paste that underneath here come on man let's get that indented yeah and this we have to close that as well right then as for the execute now we need to specify we want you to insert as follows insert into into the value the following value right now is nil value so we said okay comma and we say question mark comma another one and another one 11 of those just copy this and one more and right here enter okay comma and backslash and let's just cover here up and right underneath here I'm going to now get all my fields copy all my fields that's meant to be the continuation of this I'll just put it there and close the bracket there we go so if you notice there's one bracket here okay closing this here and there's one here right okay I'm gonna create another method that is to view my data 
So I'm going to call that view data. And view data takes in not, nothing. And right here, I need my SQL, the local variable, the connect equals SQL3. And it's meant to connect straight into booking database. Okay, the current database console and I also need the execute so I'm going to copy the execute here paste it right here in the case of the execute I'm just going to enter an SQL statement and that will be select from booking system booking scope is now booking system close that there check out whatever we have inside the rules that's the current dot fish fish show let's move this here I'm going to copy this paste it right underneath let's close that I want right there would need to just say return the rows so come down here and say return rows the next so we're returning whatever we have in here okay that is fine now the next one the next function is going to be for delete so I'm going to copy all of this just come right down here paste that for the delete and change this to delete record okay that's fine delete record and now let's use SQL oh delete record by ID okay then let's use SQL to determine what we are deleting so that's going to be delete delete from get rid of the star the star means all delete from okay where ID equals question mark because we don't know what we're deleting anyway so we say ID there we go let's enter a comma here right and um, here yeah, that's an error it should be bracket so we've taken care of the lead. uh let's see we have to get rid of this and we have to make that delete actually commence the action paste that in there and get rid of this it's not gonna return anything anyway there okay we need two more and that's going to be the search data and the update data I'm going to have to speed that up and there we go yeah you guys cannot see here so I'm going to have to maybe reduce the font a little bit let's go for maybe 12 apply um, no. No, good enough 11 all right 11 seems fair or maybe just it's a backspace here and press enter okay this one you can see that properly right and you can see this as well that's all there is to it so let's just run this up here there okay guys I would say that's the back end taking care of so let's take it up so, so that you guys can see it take it from the top I have hotel data add hotel record view view data 
delete record and search and search data and update data take a good look at the lines of code you can always pause your system to type it out that's it so I'm going to save this we cannot run this okay but what will happen is this is the this is the back end that will actually create a database called booking so when you're running nothing will happen but the database should be officially created by now so if we come in here there we go that's my booking look at it right there and these are my previous ones anyway that I practice with one two this is the latest one okay let's minimize that make sure it is saved and let's go back to our front end okay minimize that and now back to the front end that is it right here at the front end if you notice I've called my you must import database hotel okay you have to import that else it's not gonna work and that's why I included that as part of the import libraries that I have here now the next thing we want to do for this system to be able to work is we must write some more functions to to carry out the calculations to display update delete search reset and exit so to get all of these buttons doing what they're meant to do I'm going to have to declare some variables to aid me with the implementation of the code so I will come right down here right underneath my frame yeah right here underneath the frames yeah I think that would be nice yeah let's come right there the first variable that I'm going to declare would be a global variable so let's come down here and I just type in global and now I'm going to call this global variable HD that's all so means hotel database now let's declare the others I'm going to call this cost ID this stands for customer ID and that's going to be string variable I will also declare let's come down here let's say first name paste that that I've just copied come right down surname paste address paste let's get that indented and move it right up uh, I'm gonna go for postcode as well postcode there let's say mobile phone and so on guys so let's get this one indented and speed up the whole process all right I've finished the with the declaration of all my variables okay before I go any further let me let me just take care of this the dates date in and date out so I'm going to enter some default date in there so let's say date in dot so I'm going to make that today so that will be set time dot that is string time and the string time let's say um, send enter D forward slash and the month forward slash and we need 
year right there they should actually be in a quote so let's come in here and enter a quote there right and close that there's two bracket there so yeah so that's for the very first date so I'm gonna repeat the same thing for this one it's just a default date in there paste that there the other thing that I would do now is you see the customer reference so let's enter a random reference value in there so first of all I'm just going to let's say x equals random and random dot random integer value and let's I'm gonna give it a value of about let's say 1190 and let's go for about 8000 plus okay all right let's just say 8000 plus yeah that will do okay now underneath here I'm going to enter random reference so let's a random reference which is more or less like going to be like a local variable for me so let's just copy this paste it in here and enter reference so this random reference I will use that to convert it to string value convert whatever value I have inside x to string so dot set so I'm just going to enter let's say hotel here yeah okay hotel plus random reference and there we go there close that okay all of these now I will, I will have to call them inside each of those widgets so I'm going to be calling one two three so let's come right down look for the okay that's the this very one I'm coming straight to the text area say comma text variable equals cost ID so that's the very first one taken care of I'm gonna copy this and use it for the other two come right down here let's look for the other two date in and date out date in go to the text box paste that in there so that's gonna be date in and the other one the last one is gonna be data out okay it's not really the last one there's more we're gonna be entering some more okay that's data out yeah so I've called those variable that I've taken care of inside each those three those three widgets so let's come in here and just run it and see how that's gonna look like there now I have a random value there and the date so you can always change this date in is on the 29 we can then change it to 31 or whatever you want to change it to okay so let's exit now let's take care of some other fu more functions maybe I'm going to take care of let's call that I exit there we go so I exit equals tick into dot message box yeah and there we go and let's say dot ask yes or no where is it there we go and let's just enter in here hotel database management system that would be my title for it close that argument open up another argument the second argument will just be confirmed if you want to exit
there now let's use an if statement to validate the selection made if I exit less than zero root dot destroy enter parenthesis and here let's return there I will now call this so go straight to my button here where is the button exit so inside exits right here I'm just going to say no let's do that here comma command equals exit all right let's check out the exit and make sure it works as expected click on that there we go no I do not want to exit yes I do want to exit okay if you guys notice the title on the exit message box look at it hotel database management system confirm if you want to exit and you can see the icon the question icon okay you can always choose no or you can choose yes there we go that's fine now let's take care of the reset I'm gonna come up here in the case of the reset I'm gonna use two different methods so that you guys will understand them anyway um, default okay okay with the reset the first thing is I'm gonna I can use this method self dot let's go for txt and that will be I think I do have date of birth I, I think so let's see yeah there we go txt date of birth and that is going to be dot delete open a bracket zero comma end that's one method that you guys can use let's increase this thing so you can see it much better right apply that okay that is one method that can be used I can just copy this across copy the other ones that I have I have name and I also have I'm not going to play this yeah I can clear and reset it anyway so yeah reset it copy paste and I will reset it right at the bottom yep then I have name surname and so on copy this paste this here now we have first name and we have surname address copy and paste change that to address I'm just going to speed that up and the other method is I'm going to use for something like mail it's going to be dot and the mail type is I'm using a combo box there. Let's see, Neil. Okay, room number, room extension number, room type. All of these I will just use the other method. That's the room. Okay, that's fine. So for this, I'm going to use that same method. So let's come down here. And this is going to be room type. room type is going to be dot set and make that empty and so on guys okay those are my variable I think for gender and nationality I can always use this method for them so I'm gonna copy those there's nothing wrong in using this method for all 
but I just feel I should do it that way so I'm going to cut this off and paste it here that's gender and nationality cut that off as well paste it here there and get rid of these two there we go if I run my program now let's see how if there's any other one that I can modify okay yeah that's fine I'm gonna leave this like that okay close that the thing is when I reset it's going to reset or clear all of this so what I'm gonna do before I call my reset function I'm gonna copy this yeah copy this and just paste it right underneath to reset here So that will be part of my reset. So when I reset, I repopulate those three widgets. Okay, that's reset taken care of. Have a good look at that. So let's move this up so that you guys can see the lines of codes. Yeah. All right. I'm now going to call reset. Let's go right down and call button reset here let's say command command equals reset let's copy that and paste it here there now run the program and let's enter whatever in here okay click on reset there we go but well, I expected it to repopulate those three yeah let's see what what I've, what I've done wrong play that come up here the reset okay get rid of this oh yeah just comment it out for now I can always get rid of it later on comment this comment this now let's try my reset again reset there this is not working let's see hotel and nationality let's see what happened to those ones okay this should be txt right one one down and the email is not here so let's come in here i'm just gonna maybe enter email here right i think that should do it now get rid of these ones and get rid of this so my resets should be officially ready to be used now let's run it again we need to speed up because there's still more work to do. All right. Let's see now. Reset. There we go. But one, two, and three to five. They're not working yet. Okay, those ones are not working because I haven't officially called them within the variable within the widgets that's one other thing I need to do okay you see all of these I'm meant to call them so let's start with the first name I think I may have that first name come down nope I don't okay copy these and just change it to first name okay comma first name let's call that variable first name there and I'm gonna repeat the same thing for all of the entering widget this one is surname there should be a comma here so let's speed that up guys if you don't call this text variable it's not gonna work so let's speed that up 
okay guys all of the text variable for each of these combo box widget has been called there they are okay so you have a good look at them and that is how you call them okay let's come up here as the other one and just one here there all are called now all right so, so that you guys can see that just moving in moving it in a little bit okay then this is just 16 here all right you guys should be able to see it properly now okay then so all of the text variable for each component this entry widget they are all called as well as you can see okay you can see each of the text variable actually refer to the name of the text widget or entry widget now that is fine let's run it and make sure the combo box works as as expected okay drop it down select whatever there we go reset that's fine so it's all working now so one two blocks so we need to take care of these other five close that now let's go straight here underneath the reset okay enter another method in there or function the method that i'm going to be adding will be to add the data itself okay and there we go this should be adding the data right that's the first method to add the data the other one is going to be to display the data i'm going to copy this come right down here i'm trying to speed up things because because of time this is going to be display data display data okay that's for display data but um, I'm calling the wrong database the name of my database is called there we go database hotel so I'm gonna copy that and place that in here database hotel else there will be an error repeat the same thing for this yeah let's make sure it's all taken care of right now let's take care of another one this other one is going to be for hotel record hotel rec there we go all right there guys those are the lines of code that we add the data onto my database okay now if you guys notice one thing they all have a name have a number I mean that's number 1 to 11 if you're wondering why 11 I've only chosen the 11 important data I did not choose mail room type room number and extension number as you can see I have 11 here is this 11 data that I'm calling and I've also left out the date of birth and and the postcode I left out those two as well okay so that is why I just have 11 there they are okay hotel records those will be the records that are going to be kept on the database now the next one is all right now I've added delete data search database and update the data okay 
these three functions that you can see I'm calling the back end database here and here as well I've also called the back end database that is taking care of the database here as well and those are my fields which you guys can still recall there we go now the last one that we need to take care of is the the one that we display the data that we have on each of these components here and when I click on this I expect the data that I have inside my database to be displayed here and I'll be able to use the display to display every other data that I have inside my database so for now let's come back in here So let's go down I will call this function total total cost and add data there now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to as follows let's say date in equals whatever I have inside date dot get if you guys can still record date in and date out right here I've, I used it here there we go okay now I'm now calling it so that I can deduct whatever we have inside date in and date out now the next one is going to be date out copy that and just change the in to out date out it's going to be whatever I have in here there now to work out the day in day in is going to be date time that's not meant to be uppercase that should be lowercase the time dot string paste time and that is going to be date in this very one here so that should be uppercase there comma the formatted date so percent date slash percent month forward slash and year there we go right and I will also repeat the same thing for date out copy that come right down here paste and change this one to out and here as well okay the variable that I declare for date in that is right up here is called total day let's see total day there we go copy that now let's work out how many days that the customer stayed in the hotel so come right down here paste that total date dot set abstract and that will be date out day minus in day dot days there I think that should do it now we don't need to call all of this I'm gonna copy that I'll call that inside on the button I mean let's come here straight to the button here we enter comma command equals there and we also need to assign the variable notice this this where button is going to be doing a lot of work this is just one date 
a uh, total date let's look at total date there we go so i'm going to call that in here yeah so let's say text variable equals total days there we go right let's run it and see how that's gonna work change this here and just change it to maybe seven okay we expect it to deduct this from this so let's see there we go 122 days that is fine close that okay that is fine so i will now use an if statement to work out the selection made let's say the menu so let's say get get meal if the meal equals breakfast and how much that is going to cost and room type dot get if that is equals single then we're gonna work out the following let's take q1 equals floats and that is going to be 17 and let's say q2 equals i'm going to make that float 30 let's say float 34 q3 we make that the total have a total day total days dot get there we go now q4 and for q4 i'm going to use that to work out the following that will be q1 plus q2 and to work out the tax let's say the tax is going to be let's see let's take it let's say q5 is q5 quest number five equals i'm going to take care of three and four here q3 plus q4 right now let's say tax equals let's enter pound sign there yeah? pound sign plus string and that is going to be as follows dot two decimal place and that's going to be Q5 Q5 close that we then multiply that by let's say the tax rate is 0 0.09 okay that's fine okay so let's go for the I'm going to say ST that which stands for you guys can guess and that will be subtotal let's place this here st is going to be just q5 so i'm going to get rid of all of these there we go that's st now let's go for tt tt that's total cost that is going to be all of this here let me just copy everything i have in here paste it right here 
okay plus q5 and the tax rate there now let's assign all of this into the following pay tax equals now that we dot that will be tax that's for pay tax subtotal dot set that will be st and total cost and that will be tt there we go so my first calculation is taken care of but there's something i'm leaving out before i forget you see here where we have our data right here all of this data has to be added so i'm just going to copy that and put that into into my total right here so let's come down here and paste that before i forget there remember that guys okay now let's use an if statement i'm going to copy all of these to change it around for the next selection so let's say else if move it close else if if is double room there so we have to carry out some changes so let's say this is 35 44 or maybe 43 and so on okay that's one taken care of so I'm just gonna repeat the same thing for the others okay okay guys all of the conditions for the calculations are all taken care of let's come right down so that you see the rest that's for single for double family then the condition changes again here if here if you have a lunch this is for breakfast this is for lunch the condition changes here for lunch double family and the condition also changes underneath here if you are having dinner there we go okay it's the same lines of code only the condition and the price that changes and that is all there is to it so i think i can officially say i'm finished with this application okay but it's still not going to work this will work but one two three four will not do anything so let's enter some values in the fs and see let's say the name is paul Goodman. address number one Town Road Date of Bed Postcode and here mobile number. nationality gender male and just select any of these that's my oh let me use my pilot breakfast single there and there let's try it out okay I think we have an error let's check out what the error might be okay I think I think I know where the error is. I was meant to call. I was meant to call this hotel record. I'm, I'm meant to call that right inside the right here. Yeah, right there. It's a comma and paste. Okay, so let's save and run again. Oh, let's delete the parentheses else there will be an error. Now let's try it again. 
okay I'm gonna try this out now let's just change this and let's enter some value here let's say pull O I'll take that off here and address right date of birth let's just speed this up all right let's just enter something here and there so decision time there we go look at that okay it's working apart from one two three four so let's close that and enter and call all of the functions right in here okay so one down the next is just to call those functions let's write the very first one that I need to call now is display so I'm going to say command let's come right here comma that is called display data yeah display data right as if that's fine the next one is going to be update I think the update is with lowercase followed by delete I think that might be called delete data yep delete data and we have the search that is called search database I think that is all now so let's run it run there we go okay let's give that a name and the name is going to be Kinsley Kinsley Hancock address of Hancock 34 tree tree road way and so on okay mail I think he's going to set you for that single room room number let's change that to four and extension number all right there we go it's staying in the hotel for 39 days and we can just display the rest of the data okay now let's see if this this works here we have four there are three of those delete in fact it's four delete this one and this and that's Kinsley Hancock right there okay so let's enter more data and see let's delete the data we have for Paul another Paul here there and add more data in there okay let's select ID type it says student breakfast single room or maybe double this time around yeah and there so let's click on add okay let's display data all right that is Tony Montana right there so with that guys I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial but before I leave I'm going to show you guys the back end lines of codes one more time and right here are the back end lines of code one more time okay the database is called booking be careful right here you must make sure you enter the right name for the database else there will be an error okay I'm talking from experience the database name must be the correct name okay guys well I suppose you guys enjoy it I'm just going to minimize this and 
please do subscribe and you can always join to become a member of my channel. Thanks for watching and bye for now.